Hi there guys, Adam here from The Beard Solution, back with another Beard Necessities video. Uh, and in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you about DHT blockers. Now you're probably thinking, Adam, you've talked loads about DHT blockers before. I have, but I haven't really done a video apart from my my opinions on them, an actual video based on the science behind them. So I'm gonna to talk to you about them in this video and why you should probably avoid them for facial hair. But at the end of the day, it's really up to you. But without further ado, let's get into the video. Yo, I done six shows in a row, so my voice is hurting. Fans wanna hear what you're in person. Boy, oi. She want a man from Brom, but she sell with a boy from Burton. I still see feds on the block, still see the boy them lurking. He thinks I'm a poisonous person, inside the boyfriend's burning. There's too many keyboard warriors. Now, if you've not watched my videos before or you've never come across the term DHT blocker, I'm going to break it down for you. Now, if you're a scalp user of Minoxidil, this video will not be relevant to you whatsoever, so do feel free to click away. I'm talking about it predominantly for our off-label use on the beard. Now, DHT is a hormone, dihydrotestosterone, which is converted from testosterone by an enzyme called 5-alpha reductase. Now, dihydrotestosterone in some men, it's estimated around about 60% of the population, it causes balding on the scalp. It actually miniaturizes the follicles and shortens the growth phase of hair and lengthens the resting phase of hair, which means that essentially your hair stops growing or it grows very, very small and fine uh, before it falls out and then regrows again. And it will not regrow ever again unless you maybe use something like Minoxidil or Finasteride, which is a DHT blocker, which I'll get into in a moment. Um, now... On the other hand, the beard is actually caused by the same hormone, DHT. It's a sensitivity to that hormone that causes beard growth. Now with minoxidil, obviously we can bypass our genetics somewhat. Our genetics is still important. You still have to have the genetics there, but we can kind of give them a kick up the arse and make them work a little bit sooner to grow our facial hair. And many of us have shown that this works now, so it's not just me who is talking about this. Now in regards to that logic there, what we can say is that DHT blockers good for your scalp, DHT blockers, bad for your beard. Now I'm gonna just talk about how DHT blockers work. So there's two different types to my knowledge of DHT blockers. Now the first of which actually stops the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone by inhibiting the enzyme 5-alpha reductase. So it reduces the amount of that enzyme or how effective that enzyme is in your body. There is another type of DHT blocker that actually stops uh, DHT binding to your androgen receptors um, and in the scalp that's what's caused causes the miniaturization the actual binding and the accumulation of DHT around those androgen receptors uh, and in the beard that's actually what causes the growth uh, the linear growth of your facial hair and also the maturation of your facial hair as you go through puberty so Blocking DHT on the scalp, as I say, is good, but blocking DHT on the beard is theoretically not a very good idea. Now it comes to minoxidil beards. Now what we can say is vellus hairs are not dependent on dihydrotestosterone. So gains that you get from minoxidil, which are vellus, are, from my knowledge, completely devoid of a relationship with dihydrotestosterone, okay? So even if you're using DHT blockers, you can still see vellus gains. Now that causes a lot of people to get uh, to completely misunderstand the whole point and they go, well, I'm seeing gains and I'm using DHT blockers. But that isn't the point. What the actual point is, is the maturation of your facial hair, so how long it takes for you to be able to shed those vellus hairs to be replaced with terminal hairs, which are the permanent hairs on this journey, and also the actual linear growth rate of your existing facial hair. Anybody who has a, a somewhat... A, um, uh, resistance to dihydrotestosterone in terms of their facial hair follicles so they can grow a little bit of facial hair but it grows really slowly that's usually because they aren't as sensitive to dihydrotestosterone so if you were to reduce the levels of dihydrotestosterone even more it's going to cause the actual growth rate to slow down in theory now dht blockers have been shown to work kind of the ingested blockers have been shown to work in women to reduce hirsutism which is obviously facial hair growth that they they don't want which is usually from stuff like polycystic ovary syndrome causes higher levels of androgens like DHT, which obviously causes facial hair. So they've used things like oral um, oral DHT blockers that block it system-wide to actually reduce facial hair. So in theory, topical blockers could still work. We should still look to avoid them. Now, in terms of what is a topical blocker, there's actually a lot of oils that block DHT. I generally try and um, focus on the ones that have lower levels of something called oleic and linoleic acid, which are actually the fatty acids known to block DHT. Uh, there's other acids as well that do that. Lauric acid is one of them. There's loads of different things that do block DHT. I'll put a link to Sam from Beardology's DHT um, list. He's got an up-to-date list on his website on beardology.org. I will smash it in the description for you. Uh, guys, 
that is essentially the truth. So if you're using DHT blockers and you're still getting minoxidil gains, don't be so surprised. It's because to my knowledge and what I can find out, Velis hairs are not dependent on, um, on DHT. The actual maturation of those follicles to produce terminal hairs is, and is the linear growth of your facial hair. So you want to avoid them. Now, you can still use them from time to time if you wish. Most beard balms will have them. A lot of commercial beard oils will have them. Uh, but that is completely up to you. And if we'll probably find that some things affect some people more than others. So it might not seemingly affect you so much. The reason why it doesn't seem to affect naturally bearded guys who are using all of these DHT blockers is because they have a higher sensitivity to dihydrotestosterone. So generally speaking, it's not going to be as big a deal for them. For us that struggle to go fa grow facial hair, it is probably going to be a little bit more tricky if we're using DHT blockers. Completely up to you guys. I hope that this has given you some more information. I'm not telling you how you should do your journeys. I'm just trying to help you. Um, and if you did like this video, please hit that like button. If you want to keep up to date with these videos, then hit that subscribe button. And if you do have any comments, questions, queries, or suggestions, please pop them in the comments box below. I've been Adam, the Beard Solution. I'm just showing off now. And I'll see you again next time. But you don't rate me because I ain't got a blue tick, but I got one on the top that gave me. I don't even know what's real